In this video, I'm headed back to the Amazon liquidation store on $14 day in hopes of mimicking the success I had one month ago during their grand opening. That day was a huge success, but will it stay the same today? Let's head in and find out. We are back here on a Friday. Now in this location, it's $14 on Friday and then gets progressively less as the days of the week go on. So I think Saturday it's down to 10, Sunday it's down to seven, so on and so forth. I can tell this is much less busy than it was during the grand opening, which is to be expected, but I'm hoping to get lucky here. And right off the bat, I find two Xbox Series X games. This is Madden 21. Unfortunately, these are not worth anything, not especially on $14 day. In fact, those wouldn't be worth anything on $1 day. So we have to leave those behind, but it's not every day you see a brand new video game inside the bins and now i've just arrived so all of this is fresh and untouched right and so is any of this going to be worth 14 dollars? i'm definitely not picking up compost you might see a funko pop or two popping in and out of these bins there was a big bulk lot of tupac shakur funko pops i scanned those they didn't have any value so take a, a close look at everything inside this fresh bin, these fresh bins, and see if you think there is anything here that's even worth 10, even worth seven, even worth $5, because right now, at least on $14 day, I definitely do not see it. All of this stuff so far untouched, everybody just getting in, and again, a lot less busy 30 days out than it was on opening day. This could have been something. It's a Sonicare Flosser 5000 something along those lines it looks great like maybe this is an item that is brand new in the box could retail for or not retail but could resell for maybe 50 60 70 dollars unfortunately i took it to the opening station we opened it it was totally used and you get a lot of that with amazon who completely allows their buyers to rent things in that they buy it, they use it, they return it, they get a full refund, so on and so forth. So Amazon sort of perpetuates some of this, but that item was definitely very used, had to put it back, and I am thankful that I was allowed to open that in advance because if I had brought that home and it was in that condition and they didn't let you see it beforehand, I would never come back to a location like this. So we're gonna have to keep the struggle bus going and hope that we can find something, anything here that I can turn and flip for a profit. This looks like a silicone case for maybe a Nintendo Switch, but it's off brand. I'm not dealing with that at all. And my first 45 minutes went rough. Okay, we are an hour in uh, and I only have one thing in my cart so far and I can't even open that for you because it's inside a box and we're not allowed to open the boxes unless we go to the station. Uh, I'm really struggling here. So let's just keep shopping and hopefully I'll get lucky. My luck changed, but it changed briefly. I found a pair of UFOs. These are original men's slides, black and yellow stripes on the sides. These were brand new with tags. They still have all of the like foam inserts in them. Absolutely authentic, totally brand new. That's a lucky find. And I have these priced uh, at, our, at $60 right now in my store. So at $14, that's still a pretty good pickup. The other item that I have, as you saw, were those Merrill shoes. I'm gonna be lucky if I get $50 for those. So I've got a couple of pair of shoes so far in and we're like an hour hour and a half in at this point had that item in my hand but i didn't come home with it so that didn't have any value here and then again this is another one even at an hour in still not very heavily picked over the line to open packages is getting a little bit longer and i see the place thinning out really quick so that's probably a bad sign let's just keep digging in hopes that I can come away with some other things. The lucky thing for me here is we're only an hour and a half in. The store opens at 8 a.m. on a Friday. So if this turns out to be a dud, we'll walk down the street, we'll go into a thrift store, see if I can score anything at a store to make up for having a week morning at the bins location here. Again, take a quick look at the items inside these bins. Do you think this stuff is worth $14? This might end up being a day you have to skip and it always confuses me these businesses don't know ahead of time what is coming off of those amazon trucks 
So they don't know. They get the Gaylord, they cut it open, they dump it in the bin, and if they're not cherry picking anything in the back, you're really beholden to Amazon in the hopes that the trucks that you're getting have consistently good items, and they don't know that ahead of time. So this must be a very challenging type of business to run. What I'm noticing is carts not very full today, the checkout line not very long, the lines to open items, eh, not gets kind of long, but a lot of items being put back here. So I'm wondering, 30 days in, is this place going to do as well as they did on opening day? Or is this one of those types of businesses that uh, is going to end up dying a slow death? It's really hard to determine. But hey, listen, if this stuff is still around, around on $5 day, maybe that makes up for it. Maybe $14 day and $10 day aren't the most important days for a business like this. Hard to say, but I don't see anything in here outside of the few items that I do have that are gonna pique my interest enough to spend $14 when I can just walk right down the road, go into a thrift store, and hopefully have a little bit better success. So I tell you what, I'm gonna cut my losses right now. We're gonna get out of this place. We'll go into a Goodwill and try to turn this day around. Look at that snack pack pudding. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think I've seen enough. Let's get into the thrift stores and turn this day around. All right, so I'm gonna hit a rack right when I walk in. And in this version of it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We have Patagonia here. Now this is an R2 women's fleece. So if I have this correct, R, the R1 fleece and the R2 fleece were both discontinued. So I've got an item there and I'm just checking the rest of the rack. Gotta be quick in some of these areas. So where there's smoke, there's fire. I always say that maybe there's another Patagonia. You saw in my, one of my previous videos, I did find two, they were on separate racks, but this R2 fleece has been discontinued, but it is still highly sought after. And so when you when I put the comps on the screen, they're kind of all over the place price-wise. You can get $90 for this pre-owned. I saw a medium sell, I think for 55. I did see one sell for 90. There's also some that sell in the $30 range. So for me, I'm gonna always price higher, but for the sake of simplicity, when we're totaling everything up at the end, um, let's just put $50. I sell the majority of my Patagonia fleeces for $50. Let's just put $50 on that because we are in July. Again, I could hold out and get more, I believe, for that R2 fleece. So that might be what I end up doing. But um, $50 just for the sake of simplicity, we'll move on. Unbelievable Patagonia fleece find. Next thing here, just sitting on a stale cart, we have some Wedgwood India. Now, these are six inch plates and I forget, I think I have 10 of them there. The comparables were crazy when I looked these up. So. When I'm looking at comparables, I see a set of four that sold for 50. I see a slightly different design selling like around 100 for a lot of six. I think for the ones that I have here, 10 of them in excellent condition, I'm going to list them for $120. Each plate cost me $1.99. So that's 20 bucks for the entire lot to list them for $120. And I don't think that that's bone china that's going to sit. I think there's a demand for that and it's going to sell sooner than later. What a lucky find there. I won't have any problems packing that up and shipping it. The plates are small enough and you know I always use the thick bubble wrap and you know to ensure that even if the uh, carriers of the world play soccer with the package that it still ends up on the doorstep in one condition. So I'm rolling with it. $120 on the Wedgwood Bone China, India style, amazing. I actually, I keep thinking about this pair of Sperry's because fall is coming up and this is when I start to look at the Sperry boots a little bit closer. Rain boots, I think they were women's size 10. I passed on those, but look at this. Rothy's in the store. Not only did I find these in store, they came out on a cart, regular price, five and a half bucks. I think the color is Portobello. If you saw the unique sole, how that was manufactured, that color, I think these are like a tan Portobello color. If I have it correct, these I'm going to end up listing pre-owned, assuming of course that they are authentic uh, for around $75 to $85, but they are called the point. Some are uh, called, I believe, the round, where their toe is round, more rounded than it is pointed. These are the points here, and I'm almost certain that that's Portobello because of the soles. What an amazing find, so lucky. I haven't spent probably more than 30 minutes in this store and I'm already doing better than the bins location. Thank goodness. So let's just keep going and see if we can maintain our momentum here. This is like, there's bags on separate sides 
of this location. So, and I always tend to, well, I shouldn't say always, but I do tend to get lucky sometimes with some stuff, not necessarily hidden, but just kind of buried in here. Uh, a lot of toiletry bags that, you know, you can get $20, $30 for. I actually just listed a Delta Tumi one that is brand new, has all of the stuff on the inside of it still. So that was fun. Check this find out here. Is this Popples from 1985? I don't remember her name. Is it Puzzle? Uh, that's what the sold comparable said. Uh, I didn't play with these when I was uh, a young kid, so you're going to have to remind me, those of you that remember this, but what was the price on her? $4? I think I'm going to end up listing her for $35. i will clean her up just a little bit. She's not dirty, but I think there's some areas, like I wiped down the eyes a little bit, and that was a really fun find. I mean, I was what? Just a little kid at that time, so an interesting find from my time as a child this is jim is this jimby i passed on him because i didn't see that there was too much meat on the bone for that one but the popples was a great find here multicolored orange i sell everything as orange. i don't know what it is with me and orange but the thing that i touch that's orange seems to sell just one of those things that i can't explain i i didn't look this guy up maybe i made a mistake here because minecraft is usually valuable but anytime i see a tag missing I leave it alone. There's some brands that I just don't want to mess with. And if that doesn't have the tag, I don't want to fight it. So we're going to move on. Really lucky here with this Callaway backpack. I've never seen this before. Callaway Clubhouse, brand new with tags. Like, what are we doing here? It looks like the MSRP was, what, 95? Resale value, I still might be able to get maybe 70 for this. Brand new, untouched. Callaway, we're still in the heat of golf season. And I again, I've said this before. One of the reasons I think I'm having so much success or or better success during the summer months where I'm not experiencing a summer slowdown is due to the fact that I've committed to sourcing more golf in general. I mean, that just sort of landed in my lap there. But the fact that I'm sourcing more golf and selling more golf is the reason I'm having success sales-wise where I would have avoided it a little bit more uh, in years past. So this looks like ostrich. I don't know if these bags are legit authentic they look like generic brands but you know these things catch my eye so i'm gonna look them up here this was a guest bag here i i passed on it and didn't look it up just me being lazy i don't know if guess is back in or not but i'm not seeing a whole lot here list claiborne a lot of croc alligator patterns here but nothing really doing nothing that i think has resale value potential hat bolo for you here new to me brand stratton self-forming hat this is like an olive green color it's like a sheriff's hat right and what size are we looking at seven and one fourth i think i see an exact comparable sold for sixty dollars pre-owned i don't know a ton about hats but let me tell you what i saw that sixty dollar price tag and i also saw other colors slightly different styles selling in that same price range maybe even a little bit more hats are only going to cost me 2.99 in this location i think so to pay three and get 60 for that would be unbelievable so put that on your radar stratton self-forming hats they're very unassuming but listen 60 bucks i'll take that that's what i'm going to end up listing mine for at first glance and a big shout out to my audience, all of you people watching, some of you correctly identified this as a Michael Graves wall clock. So I went back, it was still there. I ran the comparables. There's one that sold, I think at auction for $38. I think I saw a few others in the 40 to $50 range. So maybe two or three, a very consistent seller. Way to go folks, I'm learning from you. The teacher becomes the student here. So that was awesome. Assuming of course that works, there's a battery in there. I'm, I'm gonna make the assumption that that battery was dead. So we'll get it home, pop a new battery in, make sure the thing is working properly. And I'll probably list it between 40 and $50. Let's just say 40 on the conservative end. It was marked 7.99, but thank you for pointing that out, it's great. So we're gonna Pull that off the bottom of the rack, check the rest of this place to see if there's anything I glazed over or missed. Sometimes I have to go through these aisles two, three, four times to see if I've missed anything. Um, but I got one more for you here, Bolo Alert for these. Now, this is an interesting brand. I don't recall ever selling these. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Cody, Quadi, Quudi, Q-U-O, I'm not even gonna bother. Anyway, they're size 11, D. Couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the sold comparables. I'm gonna be pricing these bad boys at $120. What a way to end the trip. All right, let's pick a winner for the Patagonia jacket. Pop the video in. We want replies, filter duplicates. Let me just look over this one more time. Filter comment by 
exclude users. Okay, we don't need any of that. And I just need to solve the problem, which looks like five plus three. How many unique comments do we get for this one? It looks like free users can get a max of 500 comments. Okay, so we have 317. Who's gonna win the Patagonia Better Sweater Fleece? It is going to be Angela Kay. I'd say her, her, she says her biggest issue is currently time. So much busier with family during summer months. Tell me about it. Angela, congratulations. You are the winner of the Patagonia Fleece. Email me your details at deadplanetofficial at gmail.com and I will get that in the mail for you as soon as I can. Yeah, you don't have to whisper. You, we, we can talk. I, I know. Okay, let's see what this is. What is that? I already know. Who's that? It's Taylor Swift. It is Taylor Swift. Look at this. Two of them. Cool, right? Two Taylor Swift shirts. Okay, so what do we have here? These are both... I know we have some Swifties in the crowd or your children are Swifties. Let's see here. I think these are both smalls. Uh, okay, yeah, size small. Taylor Swift, Temptation, Stadium Tour, T-shirt. Has all the dates on the back. She's currently on tour right now. She's just in Cincinnati for two days, I believe. Um, not too long ago, like last weekend, as, as of the time of this recording. And then this one, Taylor Swift here. This is also a, yeah, also a size small. And then we've got tour dates from the 1989 tour right here. Two Taylor Swift t-shirts goes to one of my subscribers. All right, I spent $77 for all the items you saw in the video today. My total listed value for everything comes to $665. And my question for you is, what was your most memorable concert? The first concert I ever went to was Blossom Music Center, Cleveland, Ohio, Green Day, 1994. But my most memorable one, I think, was seeing Korn in 1997 with my college buddies at Dayton Hera Arena, which no longer exists. That show blew my mind. What is your most memorable concert? If you haven't been to one, who would you love to see the most? That's all I have for you today. Brendan here, Dad Planet, the one-man show. Christmas in July rolls on. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.